Hello everybody and welcome to my 70th VBA 2010 tutorial. Um, this tutorial is going to show you how to use global variables. So a global variable is pretty much the same as a normal variable. Uh, the only difference being that you can use it across any of your modules or subs. Uh, so it does have quite a few uses, uh, but it can be a little bit messy, so you do need to be careful with them. Uh, and I'd only use them if you can't think of any other way of doing it. You're normally better off using uh, by ref to pass from your variables by reference from one sub to another, because uh, then you can control which subs can, can have access to it. Uh, but let's get started. As essentially what we're going to do is I'm going to start in just a normal module, not a class module. Uh, and we're just going to declare our variable. So dim and then my global var as, and then just make it string. They, they can be any type of object. So you can do it with workbooks. You can do it with uh, ranges, you can do it with whatever you want, integers, doubles. Uh, I could list all the objects, but I'm not going to. If you, um, if you do want to see all the objects, you can go to uh, the objects browser by pressing F2, and it will give you a list of all the objects that you can use, which is useful. Um, anyway, let's carry on before I get sidetracked by an object browser. Uh, let's go sub and then my first sub. And so notice how our global variable has been declared outside of our sub. Uh, but what we can do is we can still actually access this variable from inside our sub. So let's put uh, my global var equals Hello world. And then let's call my second sub, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to in a minute. So let's just copy that down here. So sub my second sub. And then down here, I'm just going to message box out the global variable. So my global var. And so what this is going to do is we're going to set the global variable up here. We're then going to call our second sub. It's going to go into our second sub. Uh, and then it's going to have the global variable. So let's press play. And you'll notice it comes up blank because somewhere along the line, I must have typed it wrong, I think. My global var, my global var, my global var. Press play, hello world. Okay, so one of them must have been typed wrong. Um, so play hello world cool so that's working now so we're assigning hello world in the sub to the global variable calling my second sub and then in the second sub we're using the same variable despite the fact that we've set the value in a different sub now, normally if we took this out and put it in there what we'd get is that blank one because it's creating the variable in the sub. So this sub down here doesn't have scope on this variable. So it just creates its own and assigns it a blank value. Um, but if we have it outside as we did before and press play and it's going to say hello world. Um, one thing you can do, uh, which is useful, is if you put uh, option explicit, then it's still going to run at the moment. But let's say you did what I did at the start and you typed it wrong. So you put an extra one up there, press play. It's going to say variable not defined. So it won't actually do what it was doing and just run it as a blank new variable. It forces you to have the variable defined. Uh, which if we have it as the global one up there and press play, it's going to run because we've defined it already. Uh, and quite a lot of people put this in all their case. I know I do. Um, and it just forces you to declare your variables uh, and gets rid of any issues like that where you're 
you think you are using one variable, but actually it's creating a new one. Uh, and that is it for global variables. We're going to use it in the coming tutorials uh, when we're going to look at active data objects uh, to create a global connection to our database so all our subs can connect to the database on the same connection rather than creating separate ones or passing it around all over the place. So that is it for this tutorial. Thanks for listening and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial where I'm finally going to get on to active data objects.